Hello and welcome to Science Revision Video. Now in this video we're looking at reacting masses. So let's dive straight in Sherry and have a look. Now let's look at this equation here. You may be familiar with this. We've got here calcium carbonate and it's being heated to break down from calcium oxide and carbon dioxide. Now this is the question. If we start off with 100 grams of calcium carbonate 100 grams of stuff here. How much calcium oxide will we get? Okay, not as difficult as it sounds. Now, guess what? Yes, we need to look at the values for relative molecular mass again. Remember that from the periodic table? Now, remember to calculate these? So, what was it? it was calcium is what? 40 and carbon is 12 and there's 316 makes 100. Nice round number, huh? So 100 there, 56 and 44. Now, this is so important. Can you see in terms of um, the molecular, relative molecular mass, both sides equation balance. 100 there, 56 and 44 makes 100. So 100, 100 is balanced. Now, it always has to balance. So if you're unsure, check it. If it's not balanced, there's something wrong somewhere. Okay? Now, if we therefore had 100 grams of calcium carbonate, we would expect to get 56 grams of calcium oxide. That's straightforward, isn't it? Now, suppose we had 27 grams, not 100 grams, but 27 grams of calcium oxide. How much, sorry, calcium, that's a mistake, isn't it? Suppose we had 20 grams of calcium carbonate. How much calcium oxide will we get? Oh, typo error there, never mind. Now, 27 grams of calcium carbonate, okay, so 27 divided by 100, where does that come from? Well, that was a relative molecular mass, wasn't it? Times 56. Where does that come from? That's the relative molecular mass there of the calcium oxide. So we now know where these figures come from. 27 comes from the question, 100 comes from the um, relative molecular mass there, and 56 molecular mass there. Work this out, you come to the figure of 15.12 grams. Now, that was pretty straightforward. Should we another example? Let's have a go, shall we? Right, different equation this time. How much aluminium oxide, that's this little baby here, would be needed to produce 270 tons of aluminium? This stuff here. Don't. Warning, don't be phased by the units. Okay, it could be grams, it could be kilograms, it could be tons, it could be elephants, doesn't matter. Just don't worry about it, okay? So here's the equation, we need to know this, and it's balanced. First of all, insert the relative molecular masses. Woo, that's a bit of complex calculation, isn't it? But you work it out, it comes to 204. 108, 96. Check it. 108 and 96, fingers and toes, shoes and socks, makes 204. So, yep, we're happy with it. Looks pretty good. We are going to move on this one. So, what do we know? If we've got 204 tons of that, we get 108 tons of that. Hmm. But we're asked if it, how much produced 270 tons. So we want 270 tons of this. How much of that will we get? Let's have a look, shall we? 270 tons will be produced by 270. Where's that come from? Question. 108. Where's that come from? It's the relative molecular mass there times 204. Where's this come from? Over here. Can you see how straightforward this is? 270 over 108 times 204 equals 510 tons.